little bit of important church news for us today. Our church council did meet last Sunday night and have decided at this point that we're going to be online worship only through the end of February. However, the council also wants you to be sure that we are continuing to actively monitor the numbers and should the numbers drop at it's more safe to come to worship. We invite you to come. Uh, we'll, we'll open back up early, and what a joy that would be. Uh, but at this point, at least, we're uh, closed through February for in-person worship. We'll be online only. Picker Amanda. So um, we've had some cold weather lately, and we've been so thankful that our Share the Warmth coat drive has been going so well so that we can share the warmth um, of a warm coat with people in our community in need. So we had a goal, Pastor Gary, of 100 coats. How many coats do you think we have? 75. Oh, no, 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 no. Higher. Higher? Higher. Uh, 79. Oh, oh, my goodness. Really, this is Redeemer we're talking about. Oh, 243. No, not, not quite that many. But we do have 109. Though. Okay. We do have 109. And we are so thankful. Thank you for um, all the coats that you are bringing. Um, we're still accepting um, new or gently used coats, um, both adults and children's sizes. And uh, we'll be doing this through the end of January. Another announcement I have, um, it's the second week for our At the Well uh, Bible study for, um, for anyone who is interested. We're talking about women of the New Testament. It's at 2 o'clock on Zoom. And if you'd like to join us, just email me or message me, and I'll get you the Zoom link. That's all my announcements. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let us prepare for our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's only beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite children to come to the screen for a children's sermon. So
So here in just a little bit, I'm going to read a story from the Bible, from the lectern over there. And then after that, Pastor Gary's going to read a story from the Bible, from the pulpit over there. And the story from the lectern that I want you to listen for, I want you to listen for the name Samuel. You're going to hear it a lot in that particular story because there's a little boy named Samuel. And when Pastor Gary reads the story that he's going to read, there's a man named Philip. And so that'll be the one that you're listening for in the story Pastor Gary's reading. Now, Philip was an adult, and Samuel was a little boy. But something very special happened with both of them. God was calling both of them to share good news to other people. Now, sometimes we might think that Philip, the story that Pastor Gary's going to read, Philip's an adult, and so that's something that adults do, is adults share about Jesus and adults share about the love of God. Is that right, though? Well, they do. Adults do share that. But what about Samuel? Samuel was called to share, too. So can kids share about the love of God, too? Yeah, they can. Can't they, Pastor Gary? They They sure can. What about you, Jim? They can share, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you're little bitty or grown up, you can share about the love of God all the time, anywhere you are. Because God loves you so, 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 so much. And it's just overflowing, and God wants you to share that overflowing love with other people. Can we pray together? The Lord be with you. God, thank you for all the love you give us. Thank you for Philip, and thank you for Samuel, and thank you for showing us that they are called to share your love. And we are called to share your love, too. And all God's children said, Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was in rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli. And said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Go lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called for me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you have called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 
Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expediated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, and then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and, Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Once I started researching, I couldn't stop. Let's try this and see if you know. What does it mean if your ears are burning? Vicar Amanda, do you know? Is somebody talking about you? Somebody's talking about you, it means. That's exactly what it means. At least that's the old wives' tale. It really doesn't make much sense if you think about it but it's passed down as a bit of wisdom anyway. So I began to wonder, what other things like that are there? Nan grew up in the country, so I started with her. She looked at me and said, if your nose itches, you're going to have company. Well, it turns out there's more to it than that. If your left nostril itches, the company will be male. If your right nostril itches, it will be female. And if it itches in the middle, 
a couple will come to call. That's when I discovered that there are lots and lots of these old wives' tales. If your right palm itches, you're going to give some money out. But if your left palm itches, you're going to get some money. If you bite your tongue while eating, it means you recently told a lie. Pulling a gray hair will cause ten more to grow in its place. But I'm not sure what that means for me. <laughs> to cure a headache, rub your fingers under your arms really hard and then smell them. Okay. If two people wash their hands in the same water, it will lead to a quarrel. One of my favorites said that if you have the hiccups, it means that someone is talking badly about you to somebody else, and the only way to stop the hiccups is to guess their name. And then there were rules about what will happen to you if you cut your hair or your fingernails or your toenails on every day of the week. My favorite being Thursday, which means that if you do any of those things on Thursday, you will get new shoes. Or if you do those things on a Sunday, the devil will be by your side all week long. And do you know what it means if your ears are tingling? Well, it means God is doing something special. Did you notice what God said to Samuel when he called him? In the story Vicar Amanda read moments ago, God said, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. Now when God said that, he was telling Samuel that the old leadership of the nation was passing away and that God was raising up Samuel to be a faithful leader of the people. One of my favorite aspects of the Bible is how God can say something in one place and time and also be saying something different to a different place and time. And so when God talks about that special thing he is doing in Israel... I can't help but think that God is also talking about sending Jesus. And don't you imagine that hearing Jesus preach, hearing the word of God so directly would make your ears tingle? That's what happened to Philip. That's what happened to Philip when he heard Jesus preach and when Jesus called him. He knew and seems to have known right away that Jesus was something special. That's what Epiphany is really about. In this season between Christmas and Lent, our scriptures are intended to show us how Jesus was light for our darkness, and especially how Jesus was the unique Son of God. The word epiphany means to make manifest. And what this season of our year seeks to do is to show us God manifest in Jesus. Each week the readings are intended to show us Jesus and how special Jesus was. The signs point to Jesus. They are unique to him. We can't do these things, but Jesus could and did to show us who he really was. He came to save, and it made Philip's ears tingle, and ours as well. But here's the thing. I think it made his lips tingle too. Because you see, the first thing Philip did was to go find his friend Nathaniel and tell him about it. And when Nathaniel scoffed, Philip didn't argue or defend. He simply said, come and see, trusting that Nathaniel's ears would tingle like his head. And they did. Nathaniel recognized that something, that something special in Jesus, too. He saw that Jesus 
was the Son of God. That's what we have to offer. We don't have to know the Bible or be theological experts. All we need are the tingling ears of knowing what God has done in sending Jesus and what it means to us. And then the tingling lips that must go out and invite others to come and see. And you know what? Once we start inviting, I bet we can't stop. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of all creation, you walk alongside us and within us through each season of our lives and through each season of the year. As we continue to look ahead to what this new year holds, stir our hearts to care for those that struggle day to day. 
Break our hearts open for those that are hungry and those that experience homelessness. Move us to action to provide for your beloved children in need. Lord, in your mercy. God, provider of every need, you give us so much through the creation that you made. Your care, grace, and mercy abound. You place us in community so that we may care for one another. God, so many of your children are carrying heavy burdens. With the pandemic still raging, there is financial hardship, unemployment, and evictions. God, gather us together so that we may care for those in need. Open our eyes to the suffering of our family, neighbors, and community. Lord, in your mercy. God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are the source of all wholeness. You are with your children through every illness and disease. You never leave us alone. God, we watch each day as the COVID cases rise. We hear the reports of hospitals overflowing and the death toll increasing. And there are still all of the other ailments that affect the health and wholeness of your people. God, bring healing. We lift up specific prayers to you now. Lord, in your mercy. God, source of all peace and hope, you pour love into humanity and all creation. You sent your son to show the world how we are to care for one another. God, there is violence around us. There are those that seek to harm others and strike fear and panic into society. We pray for those that are peacemakers, those that protect others, lawmakers, and a peaceful transition of government officials. Lord, in your mercy. God of all healing and wholeness, you gift your children with hands to heal, minds to develop medications and vaccines, and hearts to care for those suffering. God, your children are weary. Sustain the doctors, nurses, technicians, therapists, counselors, and so many more that work so diligently to care for the physical and mental well-being of our communities. Give them strength, patience, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. So with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet nourished in body and spirit to proclaim your good news and to serve others in your name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
peace. Serve the Lord. 